The Spirit of Things. This is the title of Letter 20. For many years there has been an endless discussion as to the origin of evil. Theologians have told us that God is love and that God is omnipresent. If this is true, then there is no place where God is not. Where then is evil, Satan, and hell? Let us see. God is spirit. Spirit is the creative principle of the universe. Man is made in the image and likeness of God. Man is therefore a spiritual being. The only activity which spirit possesses is the power to think. Thinking is therefore a creative process, and all form is therefore the result of the thinking process. The destruction of form must also be a result of the thinking process. Fictitious representations of form are the result of the creative power of thought, as in hypnotism. Apparent representations of form are the result of the creative power of thought, as in spiritualism. Invention, organization, and constructive work of all kinds are the result of the creative power of thought, as in concentration. When the creative power of thought is manifested for the benefit of humanity, we call the result good. When the creative power of thought is manifested in a destructive or evil manner, we call the result evil. This indicates the origin of both good and evil. They are simply words which have been coined in order to indicate the nature of the result of the thinking or creative process. Thought necessarily precedes and predetermines action. Action precedes and predetermines condition. This twentieth letter will throw more light upon this important subject. The spirit of a thing is that thing. It is necessarily fixed, changeless, and eternal. The spirit of you is you. Without the spirit, you would be nothing. It becomes active through your recognition of it and its possibilities. You may have all the wealth in Christendom, but unless you recognize it and make use of it, it will have no value. So with your spiritual wealth, unless you recognize it and use it, it will have no value. The one and only condition of spiritual power is use or recognition. All great things come through recognition. The scepter of power is consciousness, and thought is its messenger, and this messenger is constantly molding the realities of the invisible world into the conditions and environments of your objective world. Thinking is the true business of life. Power is the result. You are at all times dealing with the magical power of thought and consciousness. What results can you expect so long as you remain oblivious to the power which has been placed within your control? So long as you do this, you limit yourself to superficial conditions and make of yourself a beast of burden for those who think. Those who recognize their power, those who know that unless we are willing to think, we shall have to work, and the less we think, the more we shall have to work, and the less we shall get for our work. The secret of power is a perfect understanding of the principles, forces, methods, and combinations of mind, and a perfect understanding of our relationship to the universal mind. It is well to remember that this principle is unchangeable. If this were not so, it would not be reliable, and all principles are changeless. This stability is your opportunity. You are its active attribute, the channel for its activity. The universal can act only through the individual. When you begin to perceive that the essence of the universal is within yourself, is you, you begin to do things, you begin to feel your power. It is the fuel which fires the imagination, which lights the torch of inspiration, which gives vitality to thought, which enables you to connect with all the invisible forces of the universe. It is this power 
which will enable you to plan fearlessly and to execute masterfully. But perception will come only in the silence. This seems to be the condition required for all great purposes. You are a visualizing entity. Imagination is your workshop. It is here that your ideal is to be visualized, as a perfect understanding of the nature of this power is a primary condition for its manifestation. Visualize the entire method over and over again, so that you may use it whenever occasion requires. The infinity of wisdom is to follow the method whereby we may have the inspiration of the omnipotent universal mind on demand at any time. We can fail to recognize this world within, and so exclude it from our consciousness. But it will still be the basic fact of all existence, and when we learn to recognize it, not only in ourselves, but in all persons, events, things, and circumstances, we shall have found the kingdom of heaven, which we are told is within us. Our failures are a result of the operation of exactly the same principle. The principle is unchangeable. Its operation is exact. There is no deviation. If we think lack, limitation, discord, we shall find their fruits on every hand. If we think poverty, unhappiness, or disease, the thought messengers will carry the summons as readily as any other kind of thought, and the result will be just as certain. If we fear a coming calamity, we shall be able to say with Job, The thing I feared has come upon me. And if we think unkindly or ignorantly, we shall thus attract to ourselves the results of our ignorance. This power of thought, if understood and correctly used, is the greatest labor-saving device ever dreamed of. But if not understood or improperly used, the result will in all probability be disastrous, as we have already seen. By the help of this power you can confidently undertake things that are seemingly impossible, because this power is the secret of all inspiration and all genius. To become inspired means to get out of the beaten path, out of the rut, because extraordinary results require extraordinary means. When we come into a recognition of the unity of all things and that the source of power is within, we tap the source of inspiration. Inspiration is the art of imbibing, the art of self-realization, the art of adjusting the individual mind to that of the universal mind, the art of attaching the proper mechanism to the source of all power, the art of differentiating the formless into form, the art of becoming a channel for the flow of infinite wisdom, the art of visualizing perfection, the art of realizing the omnipresence of omnipotence, an understanding and appreciation of the fact that the infinite power is omnipresent and is therefore in the infinitely small as well as the infinitely large will enable us to absorb its essence a further understanding of the fact that this power is spirit and therefore indivisible will enable us to appreciate its presence at all points at the same time. An understanding of these facts, first intellectually and then emotionally, will enable us to drink deeply from this ocean of infinite power. An intellectual understanding will be of no assistance. The emotions must be brought into action. Thought without feeling is cold. The required combination is thought and feeling. Inspiration is from within. The silence is necessary. The senses must be stilled. The muscles relaxed. Repose cultivated. When you have thus come into possession of a sense of poise and power, you will be ready to receive the inspiration or information or wisdom which may be necessary for the development of your purpose. Don't confuse these methods with those of the clairvoyant. They have nothing in common. Inspiration 
is the art of receiving and makes for all that is best in life. Your business in life is to understand and command these invisible forces instead of letting them command and rule you. Power implies service. Inspiration implies power. To understand and apply the method of inspiration is to become a superman. We can live more abundantly every time we breathe, if we consciously breathe with that intention. The if is a very important condition in this case, as the intention governs the attention, and without the attention you can secure only the results which everyone else secures. That is a supply equal to the demand. In order to secure the larger supply, your demand must be increased, and as you consciously increase the demand, the supply will follow. You will find yourself coming into a larger and larger supply of life, energy, and vitality. The reason for this is not difficult to understand, but it is another of the vital mysteries of life which does not seem to be generally appreciated. If you make it your own, you will find it one of the great realities of life. We are told that in Him we live and move and have our being. And we are told that He is a spirit. And again that He is love. So that every time we breathe, we breathe this life, love and spirit. This is pranic energy or pranic ether. We could not exist a moment without it. It is the cosmic energy. It is the life of the solar plexus. Every time we breathe, we fill our lungs with air and at the same time vitalize our body with this pranic ether, which is life itself, so that we have the opportunity of making a conscious connection with all life, all intelligence, and with all substance. A knowledge of your relation and oneness with this principle that governs the universe and the simple method whereby you can consciously identify yourself with it gives you a scientific understanding of a law whereby you may free yourself from any disease, lack or limitation of any kind. In fact, it enables you to breathe the breath of life into your own nostrils. This breath of life is a superconscious reality. It is the essence of the I am. It is pure being or universal substance. And our conscious unity with it enables us to localize it and thus exercise the powers of this creative energy. Thought is creative vibration. And the quality of the conditions created will depend upon the quality of our thought. Because we cannot express powers which we do not possess. We must be before we can do, and we can do only to the extent to which we are. And so what we do will necessarily coincide with what we are, and what we are depends upon what we think. Every time you think, you start a train of causation, which will create a condition in strict accordance with the quality of the thought which originated it thought which is in harmony with the universal mind, will result in corresponding conditions. Thought which is destructive or discordant will produce corresponding results. You may use thought constructively or destructively, but the immutable law will not allow you to plant a thought of one kind and reap the fruit of another. You are free to use this marvelous creative power as you will, but you must Take the consequences. This is the danger from what is called willpower. There are those who seem to think that by force of will they can coerce this law, that they can sow seed of one kind and by willpower make it bear fruit of another. But the fundamental principle of creative power is in the universal and therefore the idea of forcing a compliance with our wishes by the power of the individual is an inverted conception, which may appear to succeed for a while, but is eventually doomed to failure because it antagonizes the very power 
which it is seeking to use. It is the individual attempting the course, the universal, the finite in conflict with the infinite. Our permanent well-being will be best conserved by a conscious cooperation with the continuous forward movement of the great whole. For your exercise this week, go into the silence and concentrate on the fact that in Him we live and move and have our being is literally and scientifically exact. You are because He is. That if He is omnipresent, He must be in you. That if He is all in all, you must be in Him. That He is spirit and you are made in His image and likeness and that the only difference between His Spirit and your Spirit is one of degree, that a part must be the same in kind and quality as the whole. And when you realize this clearly, you will have found the secret of the creative power of thought. You will have found the origin of both good and evil. You will have found the secret of the wonderful power of concentration. You will have found the secret to the solution of every problem whether physical, financial, or environmental.